and welcome to our very special art story time. Miss Sam and I are so excited to see all of you today and we like to start all of our story times with one of my favorite songs. It's called Glad to See You because we are so glad to see all of you today. So if you're ready, go ahead and stand up with us and we're going to do this song. You ready? Hello everybody, glad to see you. Clap your hands and show you're glad to see me too. Clap your hands, everybody, clap your hands. Clap your hands and show you're glad to see me too. was a fun way to start this story time, Miss Sarah. Well, today's story time is all about art. And some of you might do some art at home with your crayons and your paper and maybe paints or maybe some of you use Play-Doh and make sculptures. Well, this story, the first story today, is called A Day with No Crayons. Oh, can you imagine a day with no crayons? Nothing to draw with? <gasps> oh, crayons were so important to me when I was little. This story is by Elizabeth Rush, and it is illustrated, that's, that's the person who drew the pictures, by Chad Cameron. So Chad Cameron is the artist in this book, the artist for this book. have to get to the first page. Here we go. This is Liza. Liza loved her crayons. She treasured turquoise, adored apricot, and flipped over fuchsia. In fact, coloring made Liza feel tickle me pink. Every day, Liza filled her coloring books with aquamarine oceans, royal purple plums, and screaming green dragons. She papered the walls of her room, the hallway, and the bathroom with the bright, neat pages. Let me show you what that looked like. Look at that! That's how she decorated with her art. Wow! Then one day... Liza ran out of paper. Her coloring books were all full, and there wasn't a single sheet of blank paper left. Liza paced her room, unsure of what to do. 
until, oh boy, oh, what do you think she's discovering? Until she discovered right in front of her one blank wall. <gasps> oh no, what do you think she's going to do with that blank wall? I think you're right. <laughs> oh no, look at her. What on earth are you doing? Her mother cried. Coloring, said Liza. Coloring? Your walls? Her mother exclaimed. She snatched up Liza's crayon bucket. No more crayons for you today. <gasps> no crayons? Liza cried. A whole day with no crayons? Oh, that's a sad day indeed. Liza shuffled into the bathroom, feeling blue, midnight blue, in fact. A day with no crayons, she grumbled. She gripped the toothpaste crossly, squirting a blue-green streak across the sink. Hmm, now look at the mess I've made, she mumbled, smearing it toward the drain. Oh, boy. Later, Liza trudged to the park and smacked her foot in a puddle. A day with no crayons is as brown as mud, she mourned, stomping around the basketball court. Finally, Liza slumped to the ground and brushed her grass-stained knees. There are her grass-stained knees. But guess what? The green wouldn't come off. Hmm. Have you ever had grass stain come off your pants when you get it on there? No, it doesn't come off. Liza leaned forward for a closer look. Hmm, she thought. That's spring green and jungle green mixed. Liza rolled over and found herself eye to eye. Ooh, with a lovely flower. Why, that color's not bluebell at all, she said. It's more like cornflower. That's a very pretty flower. Oh boy, here she goes. Liza yanked a nearby dandelion and crushed it in her fist. When she opened her palm, it glowed. And this, it's not dandelion yellow. She laughed, it's more like laser lemon. Liza jumped up, it's even lovelier than laser lemon. Liza mashed yellow, dazzling yellow dandelions onto her cuffs, and then she squashed deep purple blackberries onto her pockets and rubbed brilliant orange tiger lilies down both legs. <gasps> Look at her pants now. Oh my goodness, she's got all the colors in there. <laughs> Here she goes, running through the park in her rainbow pants. Liza suddenly saw color everywhere. Here we go. She dragged a muddy stick across the park, sketching a chocolate brown tree, uh, a tree trunk with long stretching branches. And she pressed leaves of meadow green, sea green, and forest green in the mud and squished them onto her tree until it shimmered. She gathered flower petals and fashioned birds that flew with her across the park. Look at what she did with flower petals. Wow. As Liza left the park, she scraped an old brick across, uh, an old red brick across, along the sidewalk, drawing a desert, some camels, and then a whole caravan. Do you know what? I used to do the same thing when I was a little kid. I would find little bits of red brick among the, um, the gravel in my driveway, and I would draw on the sidewalk with the red brick. And then I would look for other rocks that might make a different colored streak. It was really fun. Oh, next to her, near her house... Liza gathered gray-blue pebbles and laid them side by side until an ocean swelled. Up the front porch steps, 
Liza scattered dandelions and rhododendron petals until a sunset glowed. Do you see her, her ocean? Here's some fish in her ocean and a jellyfish there. And there are the ocean waves. And here is her sunset. Wow, that's using your imagination. That night, Liza crawled in bed, arranging her pillows around her. Outrageous orchid, she thought. Magic maze. Wonder melon. Her mother walked into the room holding Liza's crayons. You can have your crayons back, her mother said, kissing her on the head. If you promise not to color on the walls. Liza eyed the crayons that her mother held out to her, and she smoothed the blankets on her bed and considered the coloring books spread out on the floor around her. Hmm. I think, Liza said, I can go one more day without crayons. And look at what she did without crayons. Here she is sitting on her bed, and there's the bed spread around her. And up here, she has clothing from her room and other items from around her room. Even her dog, they're all arranged to make a self-portrait of her. How neat is that? There are her eyes and her hair and her mouth with a jump rope. So it just goes to show you don't even need crayons to do art. You can make up art with all of the things around you. Yeah, very good story. I've been drawing and doing art my whole life. When I was little, I started to draw with all kinds of things. Um, I got in trouble for drawing on furniture and the walls too, um, sort of like Liza did in the last story. Um, <laughs> so don't do that. You get in trouble. Um, those are not the places to draw. But a great place to draw is actually on paper. Paper. And this story that I'm going to share with you now is something that you can do along with me. You can draw along with me if you'd like to. Even if you don't think you can draw, you can do this too. So I'm going to start out. I have a piece of paper and something to draw with. That's all you need. And then I'll tell the story and you follow along. And in the end, we get to guess. So there's a little mystery involved in this one. Okay, so I have my marker. Now, this story is called On My Walk. And one of my very favorite places to go when I go for a walk is to go to the park. Maybe a lot of you like to go to the park too. Well, when I go to the park, I have to cross the street and there's a street so I cross the street and then I have to go past a rounded rock. There's a rounded rock right here and I always pass it by. I like to pretend it's a, it's a great big tortoise, but it's not, it's just a rock. And I keep going and there's a, a big hill right here. And I like to go down, down the hill. I like to run down the hill. But you know what my favorite part of the hill is? Sometimes I don't like to run. Sometimes I roll down the hill. Do you guys like to roll downhill? Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. You get dizzy. <laughs> and then at the bottom of the hill, there is a pond. And our pond is right here. I'm just going to color in our pond a little bit. And when we get to the pond, we like to... Um, skip stones across the water, sometimes look in the water to find frogs or fish, whatever might be living there. It's really neat. And then, then we continue on and we run straight past a great big hole. There's a great big hole right here. We have to be really careful not to fall into that hole. There's a sign, so we keep away from that hole. And we run and run and run and run. This is the straight shot where we run, 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 run so fast 
that sometimes I get so tired and I have to lay down on the grass because my legs give out. So these are my legs. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever run so fast you get tired? Yeah, it's easy to do. And then, just before we turn around and go home, I always stop at my favorite place in the park, and that's the giant slide. I like to slide down probably about five times, ten times, whatever I'm feeling like that day. I love to go down the slide. So, but you know what? I said that we visited the pond and we went went running. Hmm. So, who do you think I went to the park with? Hmm. Can you guess by looking at this picture? Maybe it would help if I turn it a little bit. Oh, I think you got it. I think you got it. Oh my goodness. You're right. It's my dog. It's my dog. I go to the park with my dog and we have a lot of fun. Yeah. And maybe you like to go to the park with your dog too. Well, see, this is a story that you can play again if you would like to and draw along with me. And those of you who don't think that you have any art skills or any drawing skills at all will find that you can do this. So give it a try. Now, there are probably a lot of you that feel like you can't draw. There, you, you have no skills whatsoever, and so you're not even going to try. Well, guess what? Everyone, everyone can be an artist. And this story is going to show you how. And this is called The Dot. And it is by Peter H. Reynolds. And he's also the illustrator, so he's also the artist of this book. <laughs> and this is about somebody who doesn't think that they can draw or, or paint or do anything like that. Um, and this person's name is Vashti. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Nothing on it. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm. Hmm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Well, just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There. <laughs> Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, Please sign it. Vashti thought for a moment. Well, maybe I can't draw, but I can write my name. So there she goes. She's writing her name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn. Her dot! And it was framed in swirly gold. Wow. Whew. You know, I can make a better dot than that, Vashti said. And she opened her never before used set of watercolors and she set to work. Vashti painted and painted. She painted a yellow dot, a green dot, a red dot, a blue dot. She even mixed the blue with the red. What color do you get when you mix blue and red? Purple. 
purple. Yes, she could make a purple dot too. Vashti kept experimenting and lots of little dots with lots of little dots and lots of little co lots of colors, many, many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. Look at that. She painted everywhere except for the dot. <laughs> Clever. Oh my goodness. Look at this. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. And Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. And there's his, there's his drawing. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle. And then she said, Please sign it. Oh, look at that. And what do you think she's going to do with his drawing? I bet she's going to frame it just like her teacher framed hers. And then he is going to be an artist too. So it goes to show that you don't have to have lots of years of training um, or art experience to do art. Just make something. Make something. That's all you have to do. And you can be an artist too. Miss Sam, those were all excellent stories. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. Now, I have a story that I'd like to share, but it's less of a how-to and more of a what not to do. This story is called, I Ain't Gonna Paint No More by Karen Beaumont. And it's one of my favorite stories of all the time. But you know, when you're painting at home, there are some rules, right? So one of the rules is probably, you know, put on a paint shirt, um, make sure you have a paint brush and also paint on paper, right? Well, the kid in this story didn't do that. And so we are going to learn from his mistakes. <gasps> Look at that. Oh boy. That's a mess already. I ain't going to paint no more. Oh my goodness, take a look at this. <gasps> Here's Mama. Does she look happy? I don't think so. One day my Mama caught me painting pictures on the floor and the ceiling and the walls and the curtains and the door and I heard my Mama holler like I never did before. What do you think she's going to say? Great job. Do another room? Nope, she said, you ain't a gonna paint no more. Uh-oh, where did he end up? Is he in the bathtub? That's not a good way to start a story. Oh, there's Mama, what's she doing? Is she putting the paints way up high in the closet? I ain't gonna paint no more, no more. I ain't gonna paint no more. No, he certainly is not. Not with the paints up there. That's what I say, but there ain't no way that I ain't gonna paint no more. Uh-oh, did he build a ladder so he could get to the top of the closet and take the paints down? Do you think that's a good idea? I don't think it's a very good idea. 
So I take some red and I paint my, what's he gonna paint? Head. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Where's your head? Mine is right here. Ah, oh, what the heck? Gonna paint my neck. Where's your neck? It's right there. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Still I just can't rest till I paint my chest. Oh look, he painted a big swirl on his chest. Oh, that's pretty. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Yes, there ain't no harm if I paint my arm. Oh boy, look, there are ants. Where are your arms? Can you wave them around? Ooh. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. I ain't gonna paint no more, no more. I ain't gonna paint no more. But I just can't stand not to paint my hand. Can you show me your hands? Hi guys. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Then I see some black. So I paint my back. Where's your back? Can you scratch it? Oh, that feels good. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Like an Easter egg. Gonna paint my, what do you think he's gonna paint? Leg. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. Still I ain't complete till I paint my feet. Oh my goodness, I bet that tickled. Now I ain't gonna paint no more. I ain't gonna paint no more, no more. I ain't gonna paint no more, but I'm such a not gonna paint my, what? Oh my goodness, who came in? It's mama, does she look happy? I don't think so. Y'all don't think, cause there ain't no paint, so I ain't gonna paint no more. The end, uh-oh, where did he end up again? Did he end up in the bathtub again? That's so silly. Now we know definitely not to do that at home because that's a good way to get in trouble. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I have one more rhyme before we'll let you go and it goes like this. We gotta get our hands up. My hands say thank you with a clap, clap, clap. My feet say thank you with a tap, 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 with a clap, clap, clap. And a tap, tap, tap. We roll our arms and wave goodbye. Thank you so much. I had so much fun with you today. We hope we'll see you next time.